shows us his salvation and we should be thankful and grateful for that so let's go to the lord and pray lord god we thank you for this opportunity to come before you again on yet another week ending on friday to thank you jesus for life our health our finances and everything you've given us stewardship over we pray for those that are less fortunate those in the hospitals nursing homes hospices homeless shelters those incarcerated unemployed even those that are on death row, that you give them peace, Jesus. We pray for your apostles, prophets, evangelists, preachers, teachers, local and universal. We pray for your churches, local and universal. We pray that you give us favor. We ask that you give our president and vice president wisdom, guidance, and favor to govern this country, Lord Jesus. We pray for leaders all over the world. We pray for our enemies that they cease from troubling. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem that we prosper. That love the holy city, peace be in our gates, prosperity in our palaces. We pray for the salvation of Israel, that they come to know you as the God, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now, Lord God, we pray for our soldiers, sailors, airmen, marines, and all our men and women uniform that stand watch over our safety. And we give all honor and glory to you, Jesus, in Jesus' name. Amen. If you want to participate in tonight's conversation, very simply, dial 919 to a great weekend. Hey, 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 who do we have on the line today? <laughs> Jeanette. Okay, we're looking forward to having a great discussion. We're talking about authority tonight, and we're looking to uh, teach people about the authority that we have and the authority that Jesus has given us. So let's go ahead and get started with that. I'm going to give you the scriptures, and like we always do, you go back, look them up, study, as we always do, and there you have it. Okay, authority tonight. What is our authority? What kind of authority did Jesus leave us when he passed on the cross to go to heaven to intercede on our behalf? So these are the things we'll study tonight to clue you in on what our authority is. We're going to start with Matthew 28th chapter, 8th verse, Matthew 16th chapter, 19th verse, Luke 10, 18, 1 John 4, 4, 1 Thessalonians 4, 8, James 4, 7, Psalms 105, 15, Galatians 1 and 8, 2 Corinthians 6 and 4, and we'll end it up with 2 John, 2 John 
first chapter, ninth verse. Now look, this is it. This is what happened. We're going to give you a very quick synopsis of why Jesus came to earth. About two minute overview. Look, Jesus created the heavens and the earth because Jesus is God. He made the heavens and earth as his spirit because we know as he tells us in Colossians 2, 9, he is the fulfillment of the Godhead. So his spirit went upon the face of the deep and uh, and it was darkness, nothing but darkness. And he said, let there be light. And from that point on, he started creating. And he created man and he placed him in the garden, which was in Africa, in Ethiopia, Gihon, Fizan, those are the rivers, and uh, the Euphrates. So those were the things that the Lord left us to uh, tend to in that garden. So the point I'm trying to make with this is that we, we were given dominion over every single thing that the Lord gave us when he created us in the image and authority to do. And he was deceived of the enemy, right? Through the enemy, through his wife, uh, mankind was deceived. And as a result of that, there had to be an atonement to place us back in our standing, our right standing with our God, Lord, and Savior Christ. So he had to come down like a father would do and take care of the indiscretions of a child, the first son, Adam. And, uh, you know, sin was imputed upon the world because of Adam. As one man's disobedience brought sin on all the earth, one man's obedience will make righteousness uh, of us all, righteousness of us all, right? Okay, so that, and then after that, now he turned that authority back over to us because the authority had been given over to the enemy. And the enemy knew that. And that's why those tests came when the Lord went into the wilderness to be tried. He tested the Lord. And one of those tests, he said, all this has been given unto me. And obviously that was taking place in the garden when he took the, uh, the blessings of mankind through deception. And they were turned over to him for a given uh, time. And then the Lord... Uh, paid the ultimate price by dying on the cross and going back to the throne of grace and uh, glory. And he turned all that back over to us. So in saying all that, we're going to go ahead and get started with our discussion tonight. Matthew 28, 18. And this is what Jesus said. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Now he's telling you there is no power at all that was not granted to him. Now he he gave that authority to us uh, when he left to go back to uh, glory for us to do what we needed to do on earth. He empowered us with everything we needed to do. He said, so go. So this was his, his command. Go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. That's Jesus, all three, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And, lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Amen. Now, the Lord at that point was going back to do what he needed to do in glory because his work was finished. He said that on the cross. And as a result of his word being finished, we had to take the baton and run with it, right? And so he's telling you that authority that he has, that power that had been given to him, he's transferring it over to you, and now you have the authority. Let's look at Matthew 16, 19. This is what the Lord says. Thus says the Lord, and I will give unto thee, this is Jesus saying, I will give unto thee the kings, the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever, he didn't say, uh, he said, whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he charged his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus, the anointed one, Christ. 
So the Lord told him, I, look, I gave, I'm giving you the keys. I'm giving you the understanding, the principle, the literal keys to the kingdom. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And this is the kingdom. I'm going to give you the keys to how you can take this authority. I'm going to take you and give you literal keys, physical keys. I'm going to give you all sorts of keys that you need to take authority over the enemy. And nothing by any means shall harm you. But the, this is up to you. It's up to you. You have a choice in the matter. You have a choice to take your assignment. Or you have a choice to reject it. It's your choice nonetheless. <clears throat> All right. So look, going on. This is what the Lord tells us in Luke 10.18. And he's talking to his disciples, and he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all power over the enemy of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rejo rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. At that point, God is telling us, he said, look, I'm on your side. You're on the right team. So whatever you do, wherever you go, whatever you do in my name, you'll be prosperous in it. Now, he didn't tell you to be slothful. He gave you some requirements. You got to do your exercise. You got to eat your vegetables. You got to do what is necessary. And once you get to be that kind of a disciple, those things will not be hindered from you. But you'll be able to do exactly what he did. If he told you to fast, fast. If he told you to pray, pray. If he told you to be filled with the Spirit, do it. So you'll have some power if you don't do your exercise. But you won't have the power that's necessary to get what he wants you to get accomplished. But he told you that even at that, he didn't give you any caveat with he, uh, Luke 8, 10, 18. He tell you anything. He just said, I've given you all power. And certainly that is the case. You have all power over the enemy. And he don't want you to know that. As a result of that, he takes time to uh, distract you and keep you off your game. And he accuses you every day of little indiscretions you do and those hidden secret sins that you know about. And only he knows. Uh, about them, but uh, you try to hide them from man, but God knows, right? Right. So, so you slipped in here? Right. You didn't tell us you were going to join. See, you didn't announce yourself. Thank you, Lord, has given us all power. There you go. How you doing today? <laughs> I'm doing all right. How are you doing? I'm blessed. I just wanted to hear your voice because I heard you slept in. You snuck in on me. Okay. Okay. Turn that TV off. Okay, First John 4.4. 4. First John 4, chapter 4, verse. And this is the Lord telling us our position on earth as it is in heaven. He said, ye are of God. If you don't understand anything else, write that. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you. Jesus is in us. The Holy Spirit is in us than you, in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world. Therefore, speak they of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God hears not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Therefore, understand it that the Holy Ghost dwells in you and is your holy place, right? You are to execute the kind of power. Look, God ain't never told you about no having to get no PhD, none of that. As a matter of fact, his disciples were unlearned. But he prepared them for what eventuality they needed. In some cases, the Lord might want you to have a PhD. If that's the case, he'll prepare you for it, right? He'll never see right. you on assignment unprepared. Now, <laughs> Moses might have felt that way. 
uh, because he he said, Lord, I'm undone. I can't even, I can't speak. I'm not eloquent of speech. I I don't have no equipment. I only have is this rod. I, what? And see, that's the anxiety we feel sometimes when we go out on assignment that's bigger than us, and we don't think that we can do it because of us. You are right, absolutely right, because it's not you. We can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. That's Philippians 4.13. It's not by power, not by your might, but by his spirit, says the Lord in Zechariah 4.7. So he's telling four, six, seven. So he's telling you, it's not by your power, but not by your might, but it's by his spirit that he accomplishes the thing on earth through you that he wishes to accomplish. Now we're gonna look at this, and then we're gonna right back, and we're gonna finish up with our discussion. Okay. So what are we gonna do? listen to? This is a prayer. I like this one. I pray you'll be ours and watch us where we go.
Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Look, Amen. in Romans 10, 9, he tells you, if you want to know the kind of love he's talking about in that prayer, he said, if you confess with your mouth, Lord Jesus, believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, that you're saved, because with the mouth confession is made to salvation, and with the heart belief is made unto righteousness, and we believe that. We also believe in Luke eleven thirteen. He says, "You being evil, know how to give your children good gifts. How much more will your heavenly Father give you the Holy Ghost if you ask Him?" Now, going on with our scriptures, First Thessalonians uh, four and eight. He says, "He therefore that despises." This is the person that we're ministering to. If he therefore des that despises, despises not man, as we preach, right? But God, who have also given us his Holy Spirit. But as touching brotherly love, we need not that I write unto you, for you, ye yourselves, are taught of God to love one another. And that's the power that the Lord exerts over us or it exudes in us when we take our rightful place in earth as it is in heaven. Right? Yeah. So James 4 7, yeah. this is what he tells us. He said, then, Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, lest you be troubled. Yet, let, uh, let purify your hearts, ye double-minded. So he's telling us, if we resist the enemy and all the distractions, the Lord will exactly do what he promised you he'll do and that's one of the things i was telling you it wasn't a caveat with him telling you uh giving you the command that go and teach and preach but there are some things you have to do you have to leave the enemy's tactics by him deceiving you and then you'll be empowered to do as he tells you to do psalms 105 15 says touch not mine anointing, anoint, and do my prophets no harm. Touch not mine anointing, and do my prophets no harm. So you have the ultimate protection when you see the Lord is with you, like he tells you in Psalm 91, that he protects you and gives you long life, that he shows you salvation. In Psalm 27, that the Lord is my, uh, my shelf, my, my, my protection, whom shall I fear? <laughs> On whom yeah. shall I be afraid? So we put all our trust and confidence in Jesus Christ, and we don't fear anything or any man, and we do what the Lord commands us to do in his word. Yeah. Galatians 1, eight. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you, that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Did you hear what he said? Yeah. As we yeah, said I before, I so I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. Are you kidding me right now? So if you are going to be a pastor, you better understand what the Lord is telling you in his word to do. Because if you go out there and pretext and and putting out things that he didn't tell you to do. He just told you, you're being accursed uh, because you didn't uh, preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, right? right? In accordance with the word. Now, these are things that we're talking about tonight. I'm talking about authority. 2 Corinthians 6, 4. Now, this is authority we're talking about. But in all things, how many things? <laughs> He said, but in all things, approving ourselves as the ministers of God. So we're all ministers of God. In much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonment, in turmoils, in labors, in watchings, in fastings, by pureness and knowledge, by long suffering, and by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by the love and fame, by the word of truth, by the power of God. By the arm of the righteous of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil and good report, 
as deceivers yet true, as unknown yet well known, as dying and behold, we live as chastened and not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing all things. So the Lord gives us all of that authority as a minister of God. That's Second Corinthians 6, 4. So if you want to know what you're anointed to do and appointed to do, that second, that second Corinthians 6, 4 will put you on the right track. Amen. Amen, indeed. That's some powerful stuff, isn't it? Yeah. That's some powerful stuff. Yeah. All right, almost uh, there now. So uh, what we're gonna wrap it up with with uh, first I mean second second uh second John one nine. Second John one nine. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house. Did you hear what he said? Yeah. Don't bring him in your house, right? Don't bring him in your house. There you go. You, there, you got it. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. <laughs> And because those are not the people, they they have a God a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. Do you understand? Yeah. They look good, they talk a good game, but it's not them at all. All right. So at this time, you know what we do, just like we used to do in Sunday school. We get a summary, a prayer, and we close out and go do what the Lord requires us to do. You ready? Give them a summary of what we talked about. Speak up so they can hear you now. We're going to do what the Lord has asked us to do. And no more will stand by God's word. All right. Uh, are you going to pray for it? And uh, let's pray. The Lord. Give us the power, the strength to obey you and do for your command. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name. Charlie Caesar, here we go. Teach me, Master. Master, teach me. Oh, teach me how to wait. Say, uh -huh. oh, I would not live, live a liar. I tell you the reason why. Teach me, come on, master. Teach me, master. Uh -huh. Teach me. You know that sounds good right now. Listen. Teach me, uh -huh. teach me. Oh, teach. Teach 
Come on, Master. Teach me, Master. Teach me. Come on, Jesus. Teach me, Master. Teach me. Teach me to pray. Teach me, Master. Teach me. Teach me to walk right. Teach me, Master. Teach me. Teach me to talk right. Teach me, Master. Teach me. Oh, teach me how to pray. for joining us. Looking forward to having you again next week on another edition of What Jesus Says. Amen. 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 Love you. Bye-bye.